this meeting to order. Uh, the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors special meeting, Tuesday, September 6, 2022, at 6 p.m., Rochester campus, and via Google Meet agenda. The call to order we have done. Are there any adjustments to this agenda? Being none, we have a quorum. Uh, we're expecting two more members, Patrick and hopefully Justine to join us shortly. Uh, before we start, is there any public comment? I know we have going to be inviting you all in to speak later. Karen, I see you on there. Um, do you have any comment before we start? Sorry, no. <laughs> was that sorry? Was that a no? I didn't quite hear. I it. I, I think was that a was that a no, Karen? The, it was a little foggy on the audio. No, I'm fine, Ethan. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much, Karen. That's good. Uh, any other public? Uh, Leanne, I guess you're considered public. If you have anything to say before we start. No, nope, I'm all set. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, any board comment before we start? Oh, well, we were going to look at calendars, but that's, that's an agenda. agenda. Ah, it's agenda, so we don't need to do that here. Good. Any comment, Bill, Amy, Robert, Patrick? No comment. Okay, I think we're good. And we will go to the heart of the matter. Number five, discussion items. Current status of discussions regarding the proposed sale of the Rochester High School building to Rochester Town. This is the rest of that. Um, how should we start? I guess um, I, I would say the first thing would be an update from the Envision Rochester as to where. Not Envision. Oh, oh. Not Envision. We're the repurposing committee. Repurposing committee. Yes. Is that, that our that initiation from Envision, but we are separate. Separated from that. Okay. So. Thank you. I don't yeah. think I had that in my head. So sorry, you're you're the repurposing committee? Yes. Yeah, RHS Rochester High School Repurposing Committee. Repurposing committee. Thank you. Okay. Good. Um, I will say, uh, let us hear from the repurposing committee <laughs> as to our current status and where we are in this point in this process. So I provided um, an August update, which you will see in the very last page of your packet. Starts, Jamie organized this as the feasibility study, the full document for those who have not read it or did not participate in the, um, in the July 13th uh, presentation by our consultants. So a lot, he defined the next steps at the end of that, which was to go forward with the environmental study. And I know that you had had some clue to that in June because you signed off on the site eligibility application. And then, I'm not sure exactly what date it was, but it was pretty, pretty late. Uh, we got an email from Grace Vinson, who was the environmental, the state environmental officer, who informed us that uh, the property exists in both the floodplain and the floodway, which would be a, a problem for uh, federal funding of the project. Are we squeak oh, just Leanne, could you mute? Um, while you're listening. Yeah, I'm trying to hear now. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank Working you. on it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's the bottom mic button. Yeah. Bottom right? The, no, there's a microphone button on the bottom. Yeah. If you hover over the bottom yeah. of the screen. Thank you. Thank you. So that was disheartening to learn that at this stage of the project because we've always talked about the building being in the floodplain because of the auditorium having flooding during... Irene, but the floodway was not something that we'd ever even felt was relevant. Um, but because of the site map, the ferment that she had uh, from the federal government, um, it looked like there was a sliver of the highway, I mean, the, of the high school property within the floodway. And it's the combination of existing in both that's the problem. Being in a flood plain is not going to be a halting factor, being in a floodway is. 
So there are steps uh, to take, and we're taking them to remediate that situation, uh, being helped by um, the Vermont Community Development Board and also Josh Hanford. We had a good conference. Patty was on that conference. Uh, we have now um, uh, hired uh, Dubois King, uh, mm -hmm. who was the company who did the survey when the when the elementary and high school properties were divided, mm -hmm. and they are doing a survey and a LOMA, which is a letter of map adjustment, to be able to adjust the map. Now, we at our last the select flood, board meeting, the flood map, right? Uh, at our last select board meeting, I also made a uh, presentation about this, and Patty brought up the concern of the time it might take to have the LOMA acted on by the government and suggested that maybe it would be uh, more efficient to just go ahead and take that sliver out of the high school property and be done with any um, floodway issue at all. So um, that would be something that I guess as the property owner, mm -hmm. uh, you the school board would have to do. And I can't imagine that the school board would have any objection since it would, on, it would only expedite um, moving forward on this whole process. Anyway, that, that's being handled, and it's being paid for by the balance of funds remaining in our planning grant, mm -hmm. which paid for the feasibility study. Dick Robson uh, is the point man on, on that aspect of the project. So I haven't gotten an update any more than what I just told you, mm -hmm. except that it's, I believe it's a, the process has started, and the payment is covered. So uh, environmentally, we're moving ahead with that. The other piece of it is that Two Rivers uh, Ottaquichi Regional Commission is doing, um, so we're in phase one of the NEPA, NEPA, mm -hmm. the National Environmental Protection Act, which is essential to do for all federal funding. And uh, that's basically a document review. So. Uh, they hired on uh, an environmental consultant to do uh, the brownfields assessment and the um, hazardous materials of the property, which leaves the, the historical and archaeological aspects of, of NEPA on an environmental consultant that the town's responsible for. Now, the consultant that Two Rivers hired, and Sarah Wright is our contact there who's handling this, said that in order to avoid conflict of interest, neither the prospective buyer nor the school board can communicate with that consultant, their consultant. Mm -hmm. But we need to maybe hire a, a consultant to do the other two aspects of that phase one. And so in wanting to know exactly how to phrase an RFP, I went back to Grace and I said, I want to be able to instruct this environmental consultants precisely as to what we're asking them to do, could you please provide the language for that? And she said, well, maybe you won't have to do it. Uh, the building's not yet 50 years old. And she handed us a preliminary review form to fill out, which was completed and approved. It was completed by the town. And the town agreed to move that forward. So I haven't heard back from Grace on that. Now it is, you know. It's been because of summer. We it's usually a two week turnaround on all the emails, but we're back. We're into September now, so I'm hoping to hear from her any day now. Uh, if we do have to have a consultant, luckily uh, we have a Rochester resident, Mike Tietzel, who uh, came forth recently. He's got 30 years experiences as a, an environmental consultant, and although. His work is primarily in hazardous materials and brownfields, not the historical and archaeological. He's got um, colleagues who he can tap to do this if that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling pretty confident we're going to sail through this. I just don't know the timing of everything because it's availability, availability, availability. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether you need a roof replaced or, mm -hmm. or an environmental study done. It just seems as though it's hard to get people to lock in in a calendar, uh, which is why we asked the town to move the acquisition vote to March to make, sh because that was the other time where most voters are going to be voting. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have this vote when most people are voting. Mm -hmm. So that was either going to be the general election in November 
or the town around the town meeting. So uh, we want to make sure that all the environmental piece is complete before we vote so that we've always committed to having as much information as possible at that vote. And the information is not only uh, needed for the town, it's needed for the school district as well. And of course, Rochester is one of two towns in the school district. So we don't escape responsibility for this building, no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, we're just doing the best we can moving forward. And that's the environmental update. You want to talk about project manager? So um, <clears throat> we're also looking for a professional project manager to continue to steer this project forward. Um, there are people who do that for a living, living here in Vermont. Uh, we got a list of candidates uh, from Josh Hanford's office. Uh, we've talked to several. Uh, we're looking for money to pay for that. And uh, we're very encouraged by what we've heard from the people who do this every day for a living. I mean, they know all about the grants, the regulations, you know, and could really accelerate this process if we can get somebody like that on board and mm -hmm. paid for. I mean, that's it's really a two-step process. We have to find the money as well as find the right individual or team to do that. So that's underway. Uh, we have uh, inquiries out to um, where we might uh, find funding for this. Uh, one is the Rural Economic Development Initiative, um, and there are others out there. So. Now, this is another sort of learn as we go <laughs> to get to to get to where we need to be, but um, that uh, that's a really important step, and we think that will even accelerate the process once we get get something a person like that on board. We had a bit of a disappointment when it came to the earmark. Uh, we were put under the USDA Community Facilities account. There were only two accounts that were given construction. The other was the health. It's HR something, S-A, and uh, when Gifford uh, decided that at this point they were going to just stay where they are and not become a tenant in the building, uh, we didn't have enough of a sure thing for them to keep us under that health care account. Mm -hmm. So out of the 16 projects that uh, Senator Sanders submitted, uh, only two were approved by the appropriations, which was headed by Leahy. There's a huge difference. Leahy got $212 million around uh, approved and Bernie got somewhere like 40 something approved. But Senator Sander, he is on his way out and he's the head of the, of the Appropriations Committee and that's just the way it works. However, as I stated in my August et, uh, update, it is not bad news for us because USDA is the only account that they, that you can go back after having a rejection from the uh, earmark and still pursue your application for the same purpose. And that's already happening. Um, the uh, 14 uh, projects that were not approved are now going back to USDA before they were ever submitted to the uh, Congress. Senator Sanders insisted that every project be vetted through USDA. I had an interview with uh, Eric Law of S uh, USDA. And so they're confident that everything has been met. All the, the project has crossed all those hurdles. And we're going to be hearing back from them in mid-September. So, and they said, you know, one good thing about it is that should the USDA go ahead and green light it, the money will be available probably sooner than an earmark would be available. So that's good. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get down on the dumps about it, but you know, it was just a little bit of a setback. But then, it felt still encouraging. So we're just we're just moving ahead, and and of course we're trying to get ourselves in the best position to put a strong application in for a community development block grant for at least a million dollars. So if we could get a million out of the new SDA, and if we could get another million out of a block grant, we're you know we're moving ahead here, and the the. The hope is to get most of those upgrades to really create energy efficiency out of that building. Roof replacement, window replacement, exterior door replacement, heating system and electric system, all of that replace any kind of uh, handicapped accessibility that needs to be approved. It's all, it's all listed under phase one. That is what we want to do with the upgrade and then be ready for tenants. We do have two tenants that are basically anchor tenants. 
Uh, so we're looking, I mean, we can't, before the town acquires the building, we can't possibly have any written lease agreement, but we can get a memorandum of understanding from those prospective tenants. Uh, and that's what we'll be doing next. Vic and I are meeting with one of them on Friday, mm -hmm. so. Right. You see, we're developing this project in two ways. It's just, there is the upgrade of the building and then there is the sustainability of the building through tenants. Mm -hmm. That's that's what makes this so large and complex. Oh, it's incredible. It's very large and, and complex. And they depend on each other. Mm -hmm. Prospective tenants want to know they got a good building. To get the grants for a good building, you have to have serious tenants on the line. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's that's a little bit of a chicken or egg, yeah. but uh, that's the way these things are. And we have asked um, Julie, because there's a lot of questions that I'm getting, yeah, and right. I think, yeah, uh, uh, of the, our town clerk. Right. We asked her if um, she would please give us a rate, a tax rate, for uh, voters to understand uh, what the operations might ultimately cost them. So the uh, consultant gave us a three kind of plan way for operations. The base mm -hmm. operations, which covers the operations for maintaining the building. He, uh, and this is a upgraded building, he, uh, he um, projected conservative, he said it was a conservative projection at 91,000. Mm -hmm. And then he added to it uh, money for uh, property management or building management. Mm -hmm. And then he added a $50,000 a year capital reserve fund, which is very ambitious and we know that a serious tenant would want that ultimately because it assures them that once they make an investment in terms of you know adjusting the environment to to suit their business need they want to know if anything goes wrong with the building there's going to be money to fix it but after you've just upgraded the building chances are it's going to be a few years before you have a, a capital a real major investment there so and also, so so anyway, I asked her to go ahead and give me a tax rate at the ninety-one thousand base rate, and that would be basically uh, sixteen dollars per hundred thousand dollar property value. And so, when you look at it that way, I think it's less scary. And we've never expected that the town would be responsible for the full operations of the building. That's why we're having tenants. Mm -hmm. But there will be a period of time where there's acquisition, then there's, you know, uh, the, construction. the construction, and then there's tenant ready. So we have to look at those phases. Mm -hmm. I don't think the town in the long run wants to be a landlord. I'm pretty sure they don't. I'm not even sure they're allowed to. Mm -hmm. So we will be also looking to form some sort of uh, intermediate nonprofit uh, that can be in charge of building management. And we also, want to make sure that whatever finally happens there integrates well with the elementary school next door and is still provides uh, community access for um, those programs that the community needs. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Pat, if I may turn to you, um, what I, I hope to listen to the select board meeting where you made the decision about the vote. And I was just wondering what, if you would be able to sort of characterize that meeting or what you heard or what's, what's it, or where's I the select board? With me. Oh, good for you. Thank you. So you won't have to watch it. Excellent. Um, I brought minutes from a meeting that took place on August 8th and again on August 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, this is where the conversation about the vote started coming up. Mm -hmm. I've shared these minutes with Jamie and I will read certain excerpts that I believe are pertinent yeah, here. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so we start with August 8th, and um, you know, this represents the select board mm -hmm. as a whole, not certain, not just me. Pat announced an, an update for the feasibility study aftermath. Some of this may also be repetitive. Mm -hmm. It was suggested in the feasibility study meeting to hire a project manager to be hired to seek and write grants moving forward with the school. They are starting a conversation with how to hire a project manager, they being the committee. He feels if this group, uh, he is Frank Severy, feels if this group 
feels this is a viable solution, they should form a nonprofit and buy the building. Uh, Dune said when it comes down to gathering the information to have the town then vote on it and have an educated vote on it. So Dune was thinking it, we needed to have an educated vote. He said having to hire a project manager is now a step beyond that vote. Um, Pat said where they stand right now, they being the committee, is working on the floodplain line and possibility of further subdividing the floodplain slash way property away from the high school building mm -hmm. so that the high school would be out of the flood way. Uh, Pat noted we could as a town decide we have heard and learned enough and we are ready to go to vote as our next step. Uh, they would like to go to the town with the vote saying we have millions of dollars. Dune noted this subdivision to get rid of the floodway property is a requirement before they can even apply for funding. So that was just made public in the mm -hmm. meeting. Dune noted we had gained a lot of information in the past year. Frank stands with the fact that it shouldn't be on the taxpayers and should be set up as its own nonprofit and take control of that building that way. Pat felt this is a good opportunity to go to vote in November, either during election or town meeting. Dune agreed to get this to vote at elections. This would give everyone informed information. Pat noted she would take this back to the committee and all agreed. Um, as we go into the 22nd, this is kind of a lengthy thing. <laughs> If you thought that one was. Um, was there, if you can, at that first meeting, was there public comment on this issue, as far as you can remember? Uh, there was some com public comment. Uh, Terry Severy had made a comment. I'm not, I'm not sure which building. Um, about um, why would we want to be take. Terry said, the sad part is the town can't take, of the take care of the buildings it already owns. Mm -hmm. um, and they all look terrible. Um, there was also public comment from Larry Strauss. Um, I don't know if that's captured here. Uh, Nancy felt uh, if we go to vote, uh, she supported going to a vote so they could see where everyone stands. Mm -hmm. And Larry might have been at this next meeting at the... Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just a couple comments. Mm -hmm. There was no definitive answer, uh, discussion. Discussion on the date for the high school building acquisition. Catherine updated the board on the high school. She shared after the feasibility study meeting held on July 13th, the current situation with the environmental study and also what outcome the floodway floodplain issue. Uh, similar to what you just heard. She mm -hmm. said the most important part of the process was to start the environmental study. She explained the select board and the school board both signed off on the eligibility site application, which approves state monies to pay for this process. Two Rivers has hired a consultant to do the hazardous materials assessment as well as the brownfields assessment. Catherine said this leaves the final part of the NEPA National Environmental Protection Act for her to do the archaeological historical assessment of the site. When she reached out for help, again, this is repetitive, she was advised they may not need to do this assessment because the building is less than 50 years old. Catherine received a preliminary review form to be signed by the select board to waive us from having to do that part of the NEPA. She said there was some confusion from the town to sign and reiterate this no way obligates the town from purchasing the property. She indicated this just covers that aspect of the study. The floodway and floodplain issue has been taken up by the committee's point person, Dick Robson. He has been in touch with Du Bois and King, who did the original survey with the Division of Properties. They have assigned a person to do the survey and the LOMA letter of map adjustment to remove the sliver of high school property that is in the floodway. She explained the issue not being in the floodplain, but the floodway. She said Nathan Cleveland from the Community Development Board has approved from the balance of the feasibility. Did I read that wrong? She explained, yeah. That's right. Um, the planning grant money. Mm -hmm. the planning grant funds to pay for the survey and letter of map adjustment at no cost to the town. 
She explained with NEPA, there's a phase one with the document review and results of phase one will determine the extent or need for phase two, which is site testing. Um, phase one is investigation, phase two is testing, phase three is implementation, <clears throat> which would indicate any remediation and not by the property. She indicated you are not obligated to purchase the property because, being the select board, because you are not the property owner. The town is eligible for the Brella program, which is Brown, Brown Fields. Fields. Release of legal liability or something like that. It's a lovely mm -hmm. term. Yeah. She said all of these programs are important. She said the importance is the programs are designed to absolve the responsibility once ownership is acquired and if there's any problems with the in the future with the site. So this seems to be something that if anybody is going to be obtaining any type of grant funding for the building at any point in time, this would all need to be taking place. Mm -hmm. Uh, she explained the importance of the process to continue. In the beginning of August, Catherine spoke to Sarah Wright from Two Rivers, who has appointed a, cons appointed a consultant. This consultant thought they would be completed with the process in about seven weeks. So that would bring it to the third week of October. The preliminary review form would need to be approved by the select board and sent off to Grace Vincent. This could add more time if it's delayed, therefore it was signed. She advised the board to put off the vote to acquire the building until March at town meeting to have a very well attended vote. She said this would wrap up the whole environmental study. She said if there are any questions, please reach out. Catherine explained that Erica Hoffman Heist said the school board is responsible for the upkeep of the property since they are the owners of the property. Mm -hmm. Catherine said they are trying to work together with an outcome that benefits both the school district and also the town. She said the discussion of who heats the building, that is something that should be discussed. Mm -hmm. She said we are paying two-thirds of the school heat as the larger town of the school district. She said if the town is clear, they don't want to contribute to the season's heating, they would need to go back and see what other options they have to pay for it. She said there are private funds for that. She said last year the trustees of public funds contributed to last year's funding, the $15,000. Terry said this year's heating will be double what they were last year. That's mm -hmm. put. <clears throat> Do move to sign the community development program and how Vermont Housing Community Development Board Section 106 Preliminary Review Form. Frank seconded, Dune and Frank both approved. Comments were made by community members supporting the continuation of this study. Information to get out to the committee was a concern. There were suggestions of mailing notices, which I see is progressing. That were, effect, uh, that were effective during COVID, Julie suggested creating an email notification list to email out updated information. Larry Strauss made a good point that it is not ended by a vote because we are the buyer and the seller. It doesn't go away as taxpayers. <laughs> doesn't um, go away. I think that I have highlighted some uh, meeting notes from an August 23rd high school repurposing committee meeting, but I think that is probably extremely repetitive. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the last thing I have was, um, and we've all been informed about the Senator Sanders earmark grant mm -hmm. and where that goes, <coughs> and that there is a secondary option for funding there yeah. mm -hmm. um, and that that secondary option the applications uh, we will be in touch with those folks the CF folks which is community facilities um, by the middle of September is when yeah. when we're slated to get an e introduction through Senator Sanders that. office directly so mm -hmm. the cycle starts over again Mm -hmm. for that type of grant funding. We're not sure. Um, it does. They do say that that funding will come quicker, but they don't say how quick. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that 
I was just going to note is that Vic and Catherine were interviewed by Seven Days reporter Rachel Hellman, who was covering the story of Vermont Towns pivoting due to the effects of Act 46 to deal with closed districts and school buildings. Um, that did take place, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we were interviewed. Did. For the, I don't know if they're come out with that. And that's our official report. Mm -hmm. Is there an unofficial report? <laughs> I mean, I, I am sort of curious to hear from anybody. Um, I have not heard much conversation about this in my, you know, I don't, I'm up in the hills, I don't hear much. So I'm, 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 as a, I'm sort of interested in hearing a little bit of rumor, innuendo, and surmise of what people are feeling. If, if, if people are hearing, especially Rochester people who are hearing anything at this point from others. Well, it's clear by, you know, by pushing the uh, vote to March, mm -hmm. we have to deal with the heat season. Yes. So I brought a, this is just a first draft, but you guys can review it, can't you? of a fundraising piece we're going to launch at the Harvest Fair, and we're going to do a very broad this. It's, it's basically going to be a two-sided cardstock that will fit in the, uh, you know, in those little digital displays as well as be mailed, uh, which is starting a $20,000 capital fund drive towards heating the building. We're go taking it through the Rebuild Rochester Foundation, which is a nonprofit, uh, so that people can get a tax-exempt credit for their donation. And, and so I just this? want you to know we're seriously yeah. looking to participate in the heating situation. So can I just ask, is, uh, where did the $20,000 number come from? Well, we, we, last year it was 15000 so we, we added another 5000 to that in terms of this particular source of funding. We felt like if, I mean, this was one of the things that we want to talk about with you tonight, if we could look at the heating of the high school as a shared responsibility in this really mutual effort to try to keep the building viable, uh, while um, the studies are taking place, until the town acquires it, until we can actually secure the money to do the upgrade, then perhaps it's something that we're all, you know, all willing to participate in and all recognizing it as a, a mutual uh, responsibility. Um, so that's why the that that's where the committee came from on this and. Okay. We don't know. That is going to actually test a lot with the town mm -hmm. when you actually ask people to give the money. But we're ready to start asking, mm -hmm. and we're going to do it very broad, a very broad campaign that is probably not just going to be in Rochester, but it's going to be spread throughout the Quintown community. Um, quick question, clarification, because I don't remember. Um, is it in our budget currently for this next year to heat the building? No. It's not in our budget. Okay, um, so we need we need to have a, a good estimate, clearly, of what we think that cost is going to be, and then we need to decide as a board, obviously, if we're going to find that money somewhere else or whether we... Can I just say something? So all of us, you know, dealing with the upcoming heat season and knowing what happened in May, which was like a shocker, uh, have been involved with at least researching what pre-buy advantage could be because we're understanding that the price of oil is going to go up. So I, I know that you've got your provider. I thought I'd actually approach CV Oil, who is a local and long-term local provider, to see whether we can negotiate some terms with them. I, I, that's something that could only be done through you in terms of decisions, but I just thought I would cast around to see whether especially a local company, if they are at all sympathetic to what we're trying to do, if they'd be willing to kind of donate by guaranteeing oil at a certain price. I mean, I have no idea. This is just mm -hmm. out of my head. No, I've understand. talked to nobody about it, but I thought, you know, shopping around is maybe not a bad idea right now, right now in the summer before we're really hit with increased prices. And you, you know pretty much what, what gallons you used last year. And I think we're not going to be using any more gallons than that because we're not utilizing the building on the, you know, anymore. 
uh, that it was used. So I just thought about that as a possibility to start doing some research. Uh, Justine, I just saw you raised your hand. Sorry if you've been up for a bit. Yeah, this kind of goes back from before, but um, I, I was wondering, Catherine said something like, it's not, you know, in the town's best interest and they may not be able to be landlords. And I was just wondering, um, it, can the school be a landlord? Why could the school start renting this space? Could this school be the landlord and this get moving sooner? And then at least the heat would be paid for and things would be paid for and the town could still then buy it eventually. You would get childcare in there immediately. I mean, and they, and they how, committed to, to paying the uh, commercial rental price. And they want three significantly large spaces. I've wondered about that too, JC. Like, you've got this. This is something I've been thinking about for the past few weeks and, and planning to kind of bring up at this meeting and wondering if we can just kind of like move along and get get it off our plate, in, in, at least financially, and then wait and see down the road. It seems like it's taking a long time. I know everyone's anxiously waiting to see if the town's going to buy it but couldn't we do this stuff? You're working on all this great stuff and planning to write grants and and get okay. money and, you know. Well, Justine, the, the, issue, the issue when I talked to, uh, uh, Lindy and I have talked about this and Jamie and I have talked about this. One of the main things is who, who administers it? Um, um, who, who, and who takes care of the maintenance? And, and, it's a, and in some ways it's sort of its own business <laughs> separate from running the school. And, yeah. that, and that's and that's like um, I don't even know that we have we even have the organization for that to run something like that. Well, if, if the if the committee is is preparing a a, 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 a grant or a plan, could there not be um, funds for the administration of that for someone to be hired to do that and kind of be, work between the school board and Again, who uh, who does property. who does that? You know, in, that might be a conversation to have with Green Mountain Economic Development. It really might be, you know, they may come up with some solutions for that, Erica, to go back to Erica and say, look, what are the possibilities? I don't know what, what the regulations are governing uh, the town govern, government so or the school oh, okay. for that kind of a thing, but... Um, yeah, Well, that's either. Jamie. Yeah, so... We do rent out space currently to pre-K. I have a district that does it. It's yeah. not cost neutral, but we do it because we want to support public pre-K and child care. So it's a private pre-K provider in one of my districts. We don't offer public pre-K. I rent space out at a really affordable rate so that we can provide pre-K options. I think the issue for the board to take up is, is that we had said we weren't going to offer any educational and it's an opportunities, opportunity. right? And so. I hear what you're saying, Justine. That's that is a total 180 from the direction the board's been giving me since I came on. So I just think you have to have a conversation around that. I would also say, as the superintendent, we are good at educating students. In general, we do a really bad job around services, meaning food service, lawn care, facilities, and if busing. That's why we contract those services out, is we're just not equipped, nor do I have the staffing to do that well. And if you read headlines, that's what schools are not doing well right now, are those types of services. And so that would be my caution to the board, is that you're taking on, if you were to pursue that avenue, you're taking on something that then is requiring more manpower to clean, to take care of. And, you know, example right now, we just contracted for cleaning services in this building because I can't find a full-time custodian at night to do custodial services here. And so I just think those are all the things we have to weigh in um, in the other, regards to operating as a rental. The other, and this is, this is, has been described to us several times, is that these heating plants of both buildings are essentially ticking bombs that could go off at any time. And that if we set up a whole organization that is in there relying on that one central heater to heat even a corner, um, that we can't guarantee anybody that that heater is gonna last um, if, it, if it's working at full capacity or something like that. 
Patrick. You're on mute. You're mute. Uh, just kind of to piggyback that thought of yours. I mean, the other issue is it's going to be a lot harder to t take care of any of the capital improvements as far as the roof and windows and et cetera, if we decide to occupy that space beforehand. It's just going to make this whole process even longer and even more difficult. You think getting somebody in there now is 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 the right move, but in the long run, you might end up spending more money. <clears throat> Christine? Yeah, um, I wasn't necessarily saying getting, can't we just rent it out right now? I was saying, can't we kind of like allow the committee to, to you know, kind of facilitate or be part of the dialogue to move that forward with the hope that we would eventually rent it when it was ready? There, there's all this great stuff that can happen. There's this building that's here. The, we own it right now. Why don't you go ahead and get all of these grants and then we'll rent it to you without with being kind of a hands-off type landlord situation? So Justin, that's some of these grants are more available to municipalities, just like some grants are more available to us. And so yeah. a reminder that we have brought in over 1.5 million in grants in the SU. And some of that is going to our son, a big, a pretty big chunk of that. But that is to redo the heating system and lights in both your buildings, <coughs> controls in Stockbridge, and a brand new heating system here without mm -hmm. impacts to the tax rate. And so I don't have av availability to more grants than what I've been able to pull together. Um, across the SU, we're doing $6 million in capital improvements because I have three heating plants failing because of delayed maintenance. Well, I, I wasn't talking no, about no. the uh, school yeah. writing the grant. No, I understand. I, yeah. let, me, let me follow this up if I can. Um, and this is something to put forward to the board to make a decision. But I mean, I think we have some slightly more immediate decisions to make, particularly about heating. I think that's the biggest one we have to take on um, and should deal with tonight. Um, I, I think that well, I'd be curious to know if the board would entertain a proposal from the repurposing <coughs> Rochester if they got a firm commitment from a daycare center that wanted to use this space and pay us hard money for it, that that would be a proposal that we might be interested in listening to. Whether we approve it or not would be another decision for the board. Well, but uh, yeah, Amy, go ahead. Um, in the concept that uh, Justine brought up is you know an interesting one and I could see it working if it was going to happen essentially in the same way as the town owning it meaning there's um, they're doing it hands-off they're it's a, their own project manager and it's um, essentially sustaining itself uh, but as you know and, and all these grants are, are um, accessed to be able to do the improvements and the upgrades to make it the space that you guys are talking about. Um, would our would we be able to support though some of the money that is not going to be able to be made with grants or with the the donations, the, uh, mm -hmm. donations or your your anchor tenants because you were still saying that for the town we're talking about ninety one thousand as an approximate. Operations. operations and that would be something that you know we would need to take on we being the school board or we, we as being the school district well that 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 right? that that's a projected cost uh once the building is upgraded Remember, right, that's we're, what building I'm the, about. we're building right. the envelope we're, we're right. totally uplifting the envelope so there is there is a significant amount of arpa money right now that is available for targeted things on that phase one talk about just replacing the heating system it is possible to get grant money right now just to replace the heating system. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's one way we should start looking at it right now before, you know, while we're talking to the community facilities people, is what can we be eligible for right now, rather as a school district or as a potential buyer of the building to upgrade that heating system first and foremost, because it really does does need to happen, you know? And, and also while, while we're doing it, uh, of the electricals, because it's about energy efficiency, and energy efficiency is a very prime target for the state right now. So there is ARPA funds ready for that. And Would we were told by Josh Hanford that there is a lot of money out there for these kind of things right now. 
Go ahead, Jimmy. There is, but their focus is on schools that are occupied, <coughs> not buildings that are empty. Right, that's where the and, municipality comes and from. so being. I would also say to the board, I, I hear this conversation about us running this building, like, right, and serving the community. I'm really confused of why the school district board would do that when the town of Rochester could purchase for this for a dollar and do that as well. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why this is a conversation of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District pursuing that. Well, it's become because the timeline has gotten so extended. That's why the conversation is coming. That building is not prepared to hold anything this winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, yeah. It's just not. Like that, mm -hmm. that, is, that would be ill advised to pursue having a child care facility in there this winter because we're still repairing from the damage of the frozen pipes and things last winter. Right, mm -hmm. like that's being covered by insurance, but the idea that we could pursue that right now is yeah. just not feasible. Can can oh go ahead, Robert. Just, I want I do want to move on because I think yeah. we do need to get to the immediate thing, which is the heat. Yeah. Right. Uh, as far as the the heating system, uh, the the whole heating system all has backups for every subsystem. Unfortunately, half of all those, I mean, all the backups are inoperable right now. So we are we only have one set of circulators for each zone. We only have one one um, uh, uh, boiler operational. So we could we could be looking at more damage this winter. I'm afraid. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, well, okay. Um, it you know the timeline. This is the big unknown that none of us knew about and none of us welcome. Yes. Is the you know and it's and I know you're doing your absolute best and I certainly no judgment but it is it changes the whole. You know, we, we all thought we were going to be done by now. Mm -hmm. We did. Us too. Um, we so, thought that yeah. the feasibility study was going to be followed by an immediate vote. Yeah. But regardless, um, this this building is our responsibility. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Which is, um, I really am encouraged by how much has been done um, and how far you guys have, have taken this. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to encourage this and, and c help move this along so that it, it can be something that, that we can all be very proud of. Oh, absolutely. Um, no, I'm sorry, and you're right, and I always appreciate that you bring that up, because I'm always about, what do we need to get done? And uh, I, I think it's very good, I do appreciate that. And I also, I, I don't know if I said it to you, but I wanted to say that the August presentation, which I did attend, was really well done. It was really well done. I saw you. Yeah, and I just, I had to leave because I had another meeting, and I tried to get to both. Um, but I just thought it was very clear and very open, which is very much our mantra here is transparency and saying this is the beginning, here's the steps we got to take, this is a whole new ball game. And I just really appreciated the way you took that on and, and presented it. But, Thank you. Um, that said, I think we need a number for what we think it would cost to heat that building this winter. And we need to start working up where that those funds are going to come from. And I have to say, this is a decision if we're actually going to do that because that is a decision we have to make. Well, that's not one for tonight. I mean, you have a meeting next week. Okay, okay. so we can My advice that. would be... Well, let's get our numbers and start get our... Do we have a number yet? Do we have an Well, estimate? I provided you what it costs the last two years. Yeah, okay. And the SU board, we do have... Can you explain how our buyer works? Absolutely. So we use a buying group, um, and they go out to bid for us every year, and we lock in upon their recommendation, and we are still not locked in for heating oil based on their recommendation. Um, right now, our board has authorized us to bind a contract um, up to a little, almost $4 a gallon if necessary. Um, I don't have the exact number in my head from the last meeting, but so we are pending once the buying option is where it needs to be for us. We buy in bulk across the whole list. Sure. In the so entire buying, supervisory. Yeah. Yes, right. that would be the way to go. And just based on what happened from 21 to 22, prices doubled, and we're going to double mm -hmm. into 23. Mm -hmm. Just based on, we were buying at a little over $2 in 22, and we're going to be buying closer to 4 in 23. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that based on your own personal oil, if you have yes, to buy oil at home. <laughs> so. And, sorry, you just said double again, does you mean we're going to be paying? From 22 to 23. So we were buying, we were buying at 254 in 22. So that it's going to go back up. Is it possible so that it could go to, I mean, it could go anywhere, right? It could go to six, right? 
But no, once we're locked in, we're, we're once we're locked in, yeah. we haven't locked yet because we're expecting it still to hopefully yeah. go gradually down yeah. a little bit more. Okay, it's always yeah. the gamble of hope, 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 just hope. So our buying group tells me the rate every week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how active. Mm -hmm. this and is. do you make the decision, or do you go on their yes, recommendation? Yes, your board already provided us with a decision. Yeah. Okay. And if it's That's over fine. that, okay. then we have to come back to the board. Okay. Um, so we need to make a decision. Um, we're still. Um, do we go off gallons? What's our gallons for last? I would year? rather we take and tear the network computer that we take all the usage. She goes back to the buyer group again. We get good estimates for you, and we give you a real solid number. Instead okay. Of like okay. Trying to go I don't back like to the numbers all over. Yeah. And okay. I really think that it's important to keep that building heated. Mm -hmm. as this winter, so I think we need to find a way to, to be able to do this, working okay. together. Well, the consultants yes, that you had last spring basically said if it wasn't heated, the slab would heave and the building would be destroyed. So oh, yeah. nobody, nobody, nobody gains that. by that, right. not the school yeah. district, not the town. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're launching this, this, this fundraising drive, and if it goes beyond 20, great, you know, mm -hmm. but we, put, we had to have a target to yeah. start with because mm -hmm. the town doesn't own the building right now. And so we want to get people involved. This is the very next step of involvement. Yeah. If you want this to come to some sort of uh, realization that is going to benefit the town, then this is the way you can help. Yeah. Um, Jamie, question on Robert's point of backups, and that we basically only have one circulator for each zone. Is that part of the insurance settlement to get other backups? Going. No, I mean it's it was to get heat and to fix what was broke. Mm -hmm. Have they gone back and replaced the plastic pipe? They're, they're doing all that work. They're yeah. doing that. Okay. I mean, again, work. labor's short. Right. And so part of it is those folks are like, now they're doing they're going to do the work for us. Some of it's been delayed because they're short people and they've like been focusing on buildings that they have people in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand. Uh, Robert, go ahead. Uh, is there, has the alarm system been prepared? Yeah. You mean the heating part? For well, the part that Because it didn't work yeah. for us. We replaced that. Okay. And that is a different system now? Yeah. Okay, so hopefully. The, before it was. It's hardwired. Right, it's high wire now. Before it was. Sensor base. Sensor base, we hardwired it to give even another layer of protection. Excellent. Okay, good. This That's is the system which. which uh, alerts us if the temperature gets too low mm -hmm. in the building in particular it zones. Now, of course, we still have that situation. I remember looking up into that ceiling of um, there was no insulation. You're looking right up to the roof. And is there? We any? kept the heating below. So the idea they they were Lyle's having a re. Oh, I see. The new heat it. is below yes. the ceiling tiles. That's my understanding. Okay, he's going to do it. There's still. So I mean, it's right. just like oh, I just want to buy some. Yeah. I saw so she bats the throat. Yeah. yeah. Just to throw so it up. So what would happen if we lot if we we don't have redundancy? So what would happen is what we did last winter when it broke. We what happens is we bring people in and they pipe heating in. Yeah. It's temporary heaters. It's unoccupied, so it works fine. You wouldn't want to do that if you had kids in the building. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's what we do. And is it an added expense or is it covered by insurance? It's covered by insurance because it, it froze. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And the next time. Yeah. It might not be, and the, and have our rates gone up because of this? We know? Well, the electric bill certainly went up pretty oh. steeply, yeah, <laughs> and that, I imagine that. that's the reason. Um, oh, okay. On that spreadsheet, right? Yeah. That's happened. why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a spreadsheet guy, so I trust you guys to follow this. Okay. Um, all right. So we don't need a number. We'll get you a number. I just yeah, think you should yeah. get a number. Yep, solid a good number, number and we yeah. can Maybe. have that on the agenda for next week. Correct. So I we think can make a decision. I will use the rate the board approved, the SU board approved, up to. Mm -hmm. I will use that and I will compare that to the gallons that you used for FY22. Okay. Um, I think to. F oh, go ahead, Robert. And then I'm going to make a motion or ask somebody to make a motion. Um, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, I just blew it out of my head. Yeah. Uh, no, I did that. I jiggled too quickly. Um, let's see. Uh, will we need to? You'll have suggestions as far as where that money comes from. I mean, we since it's not budgeted, do we have reserve accounts? Can we run Which, a big sale? <laughs> <laughs> really don't like doing that. No, we of course not. Collect taxes from people. <laughs> no, I think the administration would look and say this is what we would look to where we would look to reconcile mm -hmm. to make it work. 
Okay. And what do we have left in our building fund for? Not enough to tackle this when we're trying to still tackle. Yeah, I mean, remember we're trying to use some of that hopefully to tackle yeah, right. next year's heating system. And Do we need? Um, we're, we've already said we support this process. Are you already right? I mean, if we, I, I don't remember our minutes as well as other people do. I'm just wondering if it would help at this moment to say this Rochester School Board supports like a motion. To support, we still continue our support of the repurposing committee to make it clear that we do. Because I had to be reminded to thank them by Amy, so <laughs> it's not the first thing in my thought. How do we feel about this board? I think we we should. I mean, there's what are all of the the alternatives if we don't support this? I mean, it's in our best interest absolutely to support this just because otherwise. We've got a, a looking down the barrel of a, a million dollar bond to take out that building. Yeah, or or the, the the one I the graphic image I always bring up, which is the chain link fence, um, which none of us want to see. None of us want to see a warehouser in the middle of our town. Mm -hmm. um, but even if that happened, we, it still has to be dealt with. It oh can't yeah, just it, it's it's on the district. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's we still, still have to do the environmental and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean what. It is happening, and you don't have to be doing it, so that's a plus. The whole environmental well, think, piece and everything—I mean, it's happening. Mm -hmm. So the, the the important part too is is I think to just keep our focus on is that one of our priorities has always been that Stockbridge pay for none of this building, this high school building's ma continue with maintenance, that that be on the Rochester half, and 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 I write about that. People, are we in agreement about that? Because it's certainly, I remember the meeting where we talked about that and we made it very clear and the, the number got a little fuzzy because I remember I had said right. two-thirds I, I of 30,000 and then it turned out that wasn't actually an accurate fuel number. I do kind of, I do hear what you're saying um, and I do think that we should try to come up with, um, you know, funds uh, from Rochester to mm -hmm. support this but I also um, feel like that's giving a mis mixed message about us being a unified district and us taking care of each other, mm -hmm. taking care of each other's buildings regardless of if, you know, Rochester needs $100,000 worth of stuff and Stockbridge needs, you know, $30,000 worth of stuff. It, we're a district. We're t we, we, we need to work together. I do, at the same time, agree that we should look for funds that are more specifically Rochester funds to be able to pay for that heat this winter. Yeah. Other thoughts on that? Robert? Yeah, I, I think that, that we need to leave this Rochester Stock, Stockbridge divide behind us. We're, a, mm -hmm. we're one dis school district and we've been as our, the cooperation level is, is incredibly different than it was you know, right around the mer merger and um, you know, our focus is on what's best for the kids, and yep. uh, as long as we are, are jointly unified, you know, I, I think rather than looking at this is is that town's responsibility and this mm -hmm. is this town's responsibility, I think that does no good for the kids. Leanne, hi guys. Um, well, that's actually a question that's been brought up to our select board a couple of different times. Is what the financial impact is going to be on the town of Stockbridge. Um, and I agree on one hand, we're, we're a district, we're, we're not the Rochester School District, we're the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the question is, as, as the clock keeps ticking and the timeline gets pushed back, what's the impact financially on Stockbridge? That's a direct question our town has had which is why the question of what's the the heating going to be for this year and what's what's the town what we can we as a town expect um to have to participate in that it's it's not that we don't want to we just want to know um and i and i know in listening to the whole repurposing project i'm i'm really excited about it i see the potential i also get that it's not a quick fix this isn't a quick fix it's a long term community commitment that will impact everybody positively 
when we pull it off. Let's use some positive words. Mm -hmm. Having said that, in the interim, it's going to cost money. And how do we come up with that money? Um, if Stockbridge is concerned about what it's going to cost us and the town of Rochester is going to do a fundraiser, I don't know why Stockbridge shouldn't be rolled in on that fundraiser, to tell you the truth. You know, if we have a concern about paying for it, how do we help raise money for it? Maybe what find a way it? to, you know, this, it, if it's a community endeavor, it's a community endeavor. We're, mm -hmm. we're down the road, but we're not that far away. And I think we need to be participants too. That's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you. That's great to hear. I, I, I think that's a really good point. So whatever we do um, should be um, in connection with you. Um, yeah, so we'll have, we'll have a number next week. Will we also vote on where that money comes from at that point? Or would that be in further? Well, I mean, you guys don't reconcile your budget lines. You vote so on we just say, budget. Gotcha. Right, we so can we, say to you, this is where we're expecting mm -hmm. to reconcile the budget. We do have one less teacher, don't we? So I mean, right. that's part of what we'll talk about. Okay. Yeah, okay. And I, and I thank you, Leanne, and I think that yeah. that's you know, a very good point, and I think we'll be able to come back with a, an answer mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, on that question. I, I just, if I may, I, I just want to echo what Robert said, because I really think it's great, is that it's best for our kids that that building is active. Whether they use it or not, it's just that it's a healthy, active building is much better for our kids and our community and our valley than if it's uh, uh, you know, a demolition site. Right. Pat. As a personal note, as we walk through all of this now seems to be hand in hand together, one thing I always focus on is when we get to the point where we know uh, who, what, why, when, and where, Mm -hmm. Very basic. Who, what, why, when, and where. When we have the answers to all of those in front of us, that will be the time when the fog should clear and we should know which direction we're going. We've been close. Mm -hmm. um, the feasibility cleaned up, uh, showed us a, a few directions a couple of these words were addressed. Mm -hmm. um, but then one step forward, two steps back, and, and it's, it's not a straight walkway. It's perhaps the yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. But when we get to the point where we all look at it and say, who, what, why, when, and where, I think that's when we'll know mm -hmm. what we're mm -hmm. going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. Yes, Bill. Yeah, I, um, first of all, I'd like to make a motion that the the uh, RSUD board reaffirms our support for the repurposing committee's efforts okay. to make the high school uh, not only uh, a community benefit the community of Rochester, but the whole Quintown area. Um, okay, secondly, let's, finish, let's finish that motion. A second. Okay. Yeah, the second. Um, the second. Let's um, finish Bill, the motion. Bill, let us finish this motion. Okay. Yeah, because you just made it and it's been seconded. Is there any discussion about this motion? There being none, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, I saw your mouth move, Patrick. Aye. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Bill. Um, Please continue. So I was saying, we're looking at this cost of heating system as a, a cost, on, and, and it is a cost, but it's a cost that provides the possibility of an enormous benefit. Mm -hmm. that could far outweigh our share of the heating costs for one season or two seasons. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the potential of a building instead of spending a million dollars to tear down, a, a building that can serve our community for decades and decades and decades. Mm -hmm. Not only Rochester, but Stockbridge and, and uh, Hancock, Hancock and Granville and, Granville and uh, Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about are we willing to invest now in some cost of heating so that we can continue to have the possibility of having this building really turn around and be special? We don't know. Mm -hmm. But without that investment and sharing that investment, how can we get help from the feds, help from the state, help from the community? It just isn't going to happen. And um, so I... The exciting thing to me is this isn't we're not building a 
Rochester only building or rehabbing a Rochester only building to serve only the Rochester citizenry or children or seniors. We're talking about a resource that's going to serve this whole area. And it's pretty darn exciting because we're talking about things that aren't readily here right now. That there's, there's a need for that. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, you know, there isn't a, something that comes and says the, the golden parachute. Yeah. Uh, but we've got a committee that's, that's dedicated and talented. We've got a board here that, 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 that makes the right sort of decisions. And part of the right sort of decisions is making the right investment in the future. I mean, it's almost the reverse. And uh, Jamie talks about the, the backlog and in investing in our, our buildings. And we're not the only school system in the United States of America. It's this huge backlog. I was in public works. How about roads? How about sewers? How about water systems? How about electric systems? So are we wise enough to invest so we don't have that extreme disappointment or loss? Or are we going to spend it? So I think this is not a hard decision to make. Um, and I think if we do it together, um, we're better likely to do it. Look back this last year, our budget we passed for, the, for two thirds of the of the taxpayers in Rochester and Stockbridge got a 12% tax reduction. 12%. We shared that uniformly between the two communities. We didn't say, well, wait a second, 6% or 7% was Rochester and 5% was. We all took benefit of that because of the, 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 the synergy that we created, the talent of bringing together, the good decisions, the efficiencies. So why are we now going to be nickel and diamond and say, well, mm -hmm. This is, this is only, mm -hmm. Amy said it right, we're two communities, we're one educational community. Mm -hmm. And we're one board. Oh. And I, I encourage where we're going with this. Patrick. <clears throat> um, no, I, I, I totally agree with, with uh, you know, what, what you guys are all saying as far as, um, you know, we're, we're one community, we decided that when we merged. Um, but I think this is a tough situation considering in our past conversations, we, we have already said Stockbridge will not pay to heat this building. So for us to now backtrack and, and, you know, throw into the mix that, that we might is, you know, I'm not saying it upsets me, but I know for sure it's going to upset other Stockbridge residents. So I think we need to before we just start deciding to to pull this these funds from our sud, you know, I think we need to have the community support um, being Stockbridge, Rochester. And, you know, if, if we're throwing into the mix, you know, Pittsfield and um, Hancock and, and so forth, then they need to be a part of the conversation, too. Um, we can't just say because Stockbridge is part of of Rochester now um our side that just because of that that stockbridge is held liable i mean if this is going to be something that's going to benefit surrounding towns then i think we need to find a way to fundraise with surrounding towns and try and get support from everyone to 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 take care of this together um i just i'm just trying to you know go back to our past conversations and i just think you know we're, we're kind of um, not keeping our word if, if we, if we go that route, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm hearing it wrong, but, um, I do support it as personally, and I would like to, to, uh, to see Stockbridge play a role in, in trying to help and, and come up with these funds. But I think we just need to be careful about, um, where it's coming from and how, how we're getting there. Leanne. I just I want to just clarify to Patrick that um, that's what I was saying as well. It's not about Stockbridge is going to write it into their budget. That's not what I was saying. I was saying we can fundraise as much as anybody else. And if if, if this is a a unified district and and we want to act as one, then let's come up with activities that everybody can participate and create that solidarity that way. Um, and it's not on anyone, any town's back or budget, it's or tax bill. It's 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 on our energy and our commitment to the project. So, I've done a lot of. I, I should probably shouldn't say this out loud. Fundraising projects in the past, and that's. I know that's where I'm coming from. Is that if if Rochester's going, let's find this money. I'm I'm going okay. 
what, how, how can we help with that? How can we be part of that? You know, and create something that crosses over between the two towns or all, all of the Quintown area, because I think all of the Quintown area will benefit. So, Leanne, well, well, Catherine, uh, you, Catherine, hold up, please. Now, that's not being my, me putting my hand up. <laughs> I, but I, you know, I'm just saying it's, it's, a, it's an excellent point. society, rotary, all of that kind of stuff. It's, mm -hmm. there are people who want to help, and all you got to do is tell them how, you know. Thank my, you. my husband says, save a penny, you make a dollar. You know, that's, that's what we got to do. Thank you. I just think it's timely to say that since that building was built, it has served Hancock, Granville, Rochester, Stockbridge, Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps the crime was calling it Rochester High School. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should have been called the White River Regional High School, and then everyone would feel that it is that it has always been their building. Mm -hmm. um, just thought it'd be timely because of what was said that that building is not unique to never has been unique to Rochester. Yeah. Good, Catherine. In doing some research for our fundraising piece, I I was uh, curious to learn that in 1972 a feasibility study was directed about creating that particular building as a union high school to serve all five towns. It was always meant to serve the Quintown area. Mm -hmm. And so, but Leanne, would you like to join our fundraising? <laughs> <laughs> I think Oops. we'd love to have the benefit. What, of I don't have enough hats already? <laughs> yeah, but the other thing is, is that if we're going to do a fundraising campaign, it would be good to really focus on a campaign and actually, after Jamie comes in with some numbers, have a target based mm -hmm. on what Jamie's numbers are rather than just pulling a number out of it's the hat. A, it's, yeah. it's a good community yes. building exercise yeah. to start yes. this now I totally agree. and think of it as a community thing as opposed to. And, and I think this is just a process of where we are too from the merger and from the unmerger and, and where we are now as a solid merger. Um, it's, it's a little lingering. It's still a little mm -hmm. lingering, some of our feelings about separate communities. And I think this would be an excellent way to reach out and say, how, how can we how can we help? I know that the the PTO at Stockbridge is a very f excellent organization that works very well and would have some probably good ideas about maybe how to you know how you, how they could help in this fundraising mm -hmm. activity. Super. Great. Uh, further comment on that. I wanted to move <laughs> if we could on to can we can't we need to I'd like to know a little more about this land transfer and what we need to do to, if the board approves the idea of it in principle and then how we go forward, do it. Can we move on that or not yeah. today? Tonight? No. no, we can't. There's not okay. time tonight, but let's yeah. get the results from, yeah. from Dubois Dubois and King. Great. Uh, and then we'll come back, we'll report those results and then make some sort of a action determination based on that. Just straw poll in general, are we... Are we all okay with the idea of transferring a little bit of land to take it out of the flood way? Yeah, it, it has to get out of the flood way, and I'll tell you, it takes the feds forever to yeah. rewrite redo their mapping. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the whole country needs to be remapped in their floodways. Um, so uh, it's much more quicker and less expensive, and, and I don't see how we could, the project could go forward. Yeah. Uh, That's the, the clear thing is uh, is to demarcate what it exactly what it would take mm -hmm. uh, and survey that out. We just got to have them do it. Remember, we had done a bunch of work with the zoning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I just, gotta, you know, I just want to make sure that out of their eyes or posture. Right. Like that. <laughs> um, so that's the way to go. We'll give you, make sure you get copies of everything we get in terms of reports. Perfect. Everything across the board. Mm -hmm. Robert. Um, if we're transferring it out, who is it transferred to? Who's holding this hot potato? Well, this is what we have to find out. Is that, that a, is that a I mean, something that will, will bite us in the future? I don't, so my plan was to have this done, and then we would take this up okay. with council. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, gotcha. I think that it oh, could hold be on, Pat, please wait, just till he's finished, if you can. I'm, I'm finished. No, okay, go for it. A lot line adjustment rather than a, a subdivision, which oh, is yeah. a much more simple process than Absolutely. subdividing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So we might give our neighbor a little more land. So who is who owns the meadow right behind? I believe it's still 
Tokyo. 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 Right even directly behind you. He owns the entire so. That's my, because when I looked at the map, when I did it for the woods area, I saw his line is, seems like it's right behind us. I don't so know who owns that. Now. Yeah, I mean, you can look at, I didn't have my computer, you can look at that thing on okay. line. Mm -hmm. Well, let's but definitely get more information yeah, about it. Yeah, let's get more information. Um, basic uh, thumbs up that we're good to look into this. Just sort of a straw poll. Justine, Patrick, good. Okay, good. Good. Nothing official. Um, great. Uh, let me just see. Land transfer, heating, and maintenance. I guess the only other question I have right now is what is the condition inside the high school? As far as you know, I mean, it may not have changed it at hasn't all. Changed. Since, it hasn't yeah, which hasn't changed since the last big move of stuff out, right? There was a slide. We had some volunteers and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Um, is that is any of that? Um, there was. I remember a while back there was a concern about documents. That's that were been in, moved over. They have been moved over. Great. So those are no longer in that building. Correct. Um, is there anything else of concern in the building at this point, other than this heating? An electrical system. No, and I know as far as technology stuff, Ray wasn't concerned. Okay. Either I had asked him that. Good. Good. All right. So I did get an email from um, Sarah Wright saying the consultant they've hired wants the original blueprints of the high school building, and Greg Gossens, our consultant architect, said that they were in the office. So I don't know about transferring done. They've been scanned. Huh? We had someone come and get them and scan them, so they're digital now. So that's have... a, so that's done. Yeah. Very good. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank nice you. We have I was the ones could... that are not falling apart anymore, number one. <laughs> the ones that were so in that you... box were falling apart. So did you get supply the scan to them then? Or uh, is that something I should I, tell you Sarah? Double check. I have Sarah contact myself or I believe Lyle was helping us with that. And I just don't know if it got to the right person that you're talking okay. about. Okay. I would just like been... to know that that box is yeah, checked. I think so. I think it did, but they've been sent out to multiple people multiple times, so I'm not going to say that it actually made its way to the right <laughs> person. <laughs> is it just Sarah? Is it just Sarah? Sarah Wright is the okay. two-member yeah, no, person that are. our okay. contact who's doing that piece okay. of the environmental study. Okay. I think I would have heard from her if they hadn't, but I'll, right. I'll leave I think out. she had someone reach out and... Good. Yeah. Good. And I just, it was a lingering thing. And no, I hadn't heard they came feedback. and got them like last December yeah. and scanned them for us. So we have them digitally now. Okay, well, I didn't know that. And yeah. I don't think Greg knew that either. So we had someone come and do it. And then cool. Greg is who I've been talking with. Greg Gossens? Yes. Oh, he so he's followed out. up? Yes. Good for him. I believe it was. Yeah. So, so this that's, is you know, that old makes me plans happy. plants are not the new yeah. ones that were created by. Um, the Black new River. ones by Black River are digital, but then also those other ones were scanned. These are the all the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Remember that big box, Amy? Yeah. It was all library. Yeah. Okay. They went through it all. Oh, you know, both of the consultants at the conclusion told us that please don't hesitate to contact them if anybody needed their support, help, or anything yeah. like that. So that makes me happy to know that Greg followed yeah. through. Yeah. They're technically off the clock, but they're still helping. But they <laughs> very great. got That's very enthusiastic good. about what we're trying to do mm -hmm. here. So. Great. Great. Good. Good. And thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much for taking time. Yeah. I believe we're, uh, it, oh, we do, hold on, we, well, you don't thank have you. to be here. Um, we have a next meeting yes. date, our official meeting will be Monday, no, September. No, we have to, 5 .5. Oh, sorry, too, that's right. We have, sorry, 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 sorry. Get your calendars out. Get your calendars out. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so Very much. Enjoyable. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Um, Meeting with a very good feeling. Is, uh, so we've got it. So the full board is doing a retreat on the 22nd. Yep. So I'm going to put a plug in for that again. Yep. I'm there. That's at 530. I'm still working with Kathy on a location for that. Is November too late? Because September and October are just crammed for me anyway. Um, That's like two and a half months into the school year. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Um, oh, I mean, so I don't think it, what? Go ahead. I, I don't think anything's too late as long as we can get it on there. I mean, it's better to have it than not have it. Yeah. But well, let's try. Let's try. I mean, um, I'm. Does it have to be a weekend? No, I threw out that Thursday because we had kept those for committee meetings and special meetings, mm -hmm. and I didn't know if that would be easier for board members to look at a Thursday evening. 
I mean, I can. It could be afternoon into evening. I just throw that out. It seemed like that got more traction at the full board. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I could do a Thursday evening, depending on mm -hmm. the Thursday evening. Can we have it at La Provence or Fire and Ice? <laughs> or Maple Soul. Fire and Ice, take that the, would be my vote. Take the back <laughs> room, <laughs> Maple Soul. Have you been to Maple Soul no. yet? No. Oh. So good. So good. Really great. good. <laughs> back room at Maple Soul, and they're open on Thursdays. Oh, who knows if they'll yeah. be. So what Thursday in September do we have here, possibility? Not the 15th. Um, not the 15th. I can't do the third. Jamie's gone. Um, oh, Jamie's gone. That's right. What what it's month are we looking share. at? This is September 6th. Well, I, what what month are we looking at? September. September. We're, we're going to start. A little, See if we little soon do. for me, but um, uh, 22nd obviously is out. You got the 29th. The 15th, Jamie's gone, which is not serving us. So the 29th. And then we get into October 6th or 13th. I'm, I'm gone for a couple of weeks in California, so mm -hmm. I don't like At what point? Uh, I would not be able to do the 29th or the 6th. Okay. I think the point of this is to do a time that everybody can make it. Yeah. Um, so how about if we work to the uh, 20th of October? All right. How does that look? 20th. No, I can't. I can't do the 20th because it's a select board meeting in Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. Is the 13th? I, the 13th could be open. That's a committee meeting. But he's that. Robert won't. No, I'm not. Oh, you'll be on the 13th. Yes. Oh, okay. Of October. 13th of October. We're on the 13th. Justine. 13th. Pardon me. Patrick's for me. It works for you. Yeah. Patrick. Right. 13th, yeah, it's the second Thursday. Yep. You're on that committee, Patrick, but can you do this? Yep, you're, you're muted. You're laughing, but we can't hear you. Yeah, I was just saying it looks like you have the energy committee meeting, but you tell me, if, you know, whatever. I think I think this trumps the energy yeah. committee because this is one time and that's ongoing. And how early can we start? Whatever you guys want to do. Um, well, if Katie five. works out, I can do all kinds of things. I got to say, I'm a free oh, man yeah. in Paris. You say five thirty? Five. Five would be ideal because then five we get a little do more do time. Do we want to have dinner? Do we want to cater and get? Yeah, yeah we. Food. I think you should. I think food's important at these. Yeah. Personally, too. it makes it sociable. What do you guys think is five acceptable time? It's a little bit early for me. Five thirty. Um, but I can try to figure out. Why don't we say five thirty? Five thirty. 5:32. Where do you want to hold it? Oh, right here. How about yeah, I mean, this? Is a nice yeah. spot, and we yeah. cater. We get yeah. maple sold to cater. 5:30 work better for you, Justine? Yeah, it would be better for me. Okay. All right. 5:30. 5:30 the 13th. 5:30 the 13th. Yeah. Cool. Pizza. And, the, and there'll be food. Pizza. Pizza? No, love pizza. No. <laughs> Bill and I, I do. Bill and I eat a lot of pizzas on Thursday night because oh, you go for the negotiations. <laughs> oh, see, it can get. I, I never thought of it, but COVID made me realize pizza can get old. <laughs> really? just, just, we don't eat it much at home, so uh, it's a treat. We did. It became a Friday night thing. Every movie pizza movie night. All right, and this is called. Okay. Our sud. Um, Leanne used her hand. What's that? Me and oh, Thursday, the wild fern pizza. Oh, that's wild fern pizza. <laughs> Next, some of the best pizza. Pizza, absolutely. Sorry. Thank you all. Thank you all. Leanne raised her hand. Yeah, so we get priority. You're now. muted. You're muted, Leanne. And it's wonderful, but I can't hear you. Leanne, Leanne. Oh, it's so wonderful, but we can't hear a thing you're saying. You're Leanne, muted. You're muted. <laughs> okay, you're making me drool with the pizza thing, and I know that's not my gig with you guys. To clarify, when are we going to hear a number back at what meeting on the heating? Ne next Monday. Next, next Monday, Monday meeting. Okay. That's yeah. our regular. That's our regularly scheduled meeting. Regular meeting. Starts at okay. 530. Starts at 530, which is a new time for us. Okay. So just in case you don't have that. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, what time do that? Sorry, what time do we say? We're, we didn't say what time we're going to. What time are we going to? 5.30 till 8.30? 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. 3
Three hours? Yeah, I mean, I think. 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, 12, 1, Pass 2. Your principal Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 8 30. Let's say 8 30. Does that sound yeah. reasonable? Three hours. Good. Yeah. So I have to get right on it. Yep. Excellent. All right. Uh, starts 5.30 and 6.30. Thank you all. I okay. thought this would be easier in person, and we were successful. Do you have some, do you want to talk about agenda items? Um, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, do we already have some from before, though, that we already just talked about? Uh, we had well, some, the, the re review of mission vision. Mission we had vision. Uh, board protocols and procedures evaluation. We were going to go over. I think at that time you should review your procedures again. I think, you know, one of the things that you've talked about was the idea of a book study as a board, right? Did you talk? I've got a lot of boards. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. We, Didn't we, you we talk about that? Oh, we're doing that. that. I'm doing that with one local that's district. Really it's an agenda cool. item every month. So yeah. well, whether or not that's yeah, something we haven't assigned, pursue. We haven't assigned that yet. So. We have the book. Aren't we talked yeah. about it's reading the, the first it's chapter. It's really. the introduction. It's like 10 pages. And read. And so the idea is that we can share what we've learned and then decide whether we want to continue. So that could like be an agenda it's written or blah, 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 blah. Um, but it's definitely doable. Oh, here we go. Owen suggested taking time for each member to discuss how they feel things are going at the school. Yeah, I still agree, agree with that. And I would add to that how they things are going and what is your vision for where the school should go? Because I know I've got some strong feelings about that. And, and again, yeah. it's, our, it's our vision, it's our job to come up with the vision. It's the administration's job to figure out how it can work and how to pay for it. So, you know, Things think big and bring it to the retreat. Okay. Yeah, think big. Um, I had two ideas, depending on the length it takes and everything else. One is in June, we passed the uh, our set goals, uh, vision and goals. And so it's right there in June. Uh, we're now starting a new year. So it seems to me it'd be pretty simple to review the goals and say, yeah, we're still kind of all this is what we voted on and we want to continue. And so that's, it, it just kind of reaffirms what we're all about here because that's that's to provides the direction. The other thing has been mentioned, um, and we don't have to decide any of this, is uh, the utility of having a mentoring system for new board members. And I have I was a new board member and half the board have been new. And um, I like to think that we can do a better job in preparing and having material um, to help new board members. What is it about? What are our responsibilities? Uh, what, what are the procedures? Blah, 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 blah. And I think the mentoring concept, uh, I'm really in a mentoring period, um, is a good one. And if we like that idea, we don't have immediate new members, but we could work on developing a mentoring program or material that we'll be prepared for when we have turnover. It'll probably help us become better board members, too. So if we have time, I, I think that's worth discussing. Good. I, I just want to, you know, a lot of bills has a lot of ideas, and I want to make sure that nobody else gets shy <laughs> about putting their ideas of what should be on our agenda. Can we, let's, we got a, a month, two, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, a month. Um, Throw some ideas out. It's, I, I really do think this is a time to go beyond outside the box a little bit in our thinking, and that everybody has a chance to do that in this, um, uh, in terms of what what we think we should talk about. And I and I also really want to have some time. I know you're supposed to agenda everything, but I think I, that's why I want some free time where people can just sort of what I call a blurt. You know, you just get to talk about the school and how you feel about it. And everyone gets three minutes or something like that to just blurt how they feel and what they think. And who knows what will come out of that. And uh, um, some good and also we'll all know where we stand, um, which I think is very useful. Brainstorming? Brainstorming, same kind of thing. Yeah. Good. Does that give you a place to start? Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else on... Retreat. No? Now, any public comment? 
Well, our next meeting first. Oh, yes. Karen, please go ahead. Even though next meeting, but we know what our next meeting is. Yeah, let me just say this next meeting date is Monday, next Monday, September 12th, 2022, at 5.30, just to make sure everyone knows it's a new time, and again, the Rochester campus and Google Meet. And now, please, Karen. Okay, thank you. Um, and I did take some notes, so I do have a couple, actually a few questions um, that you may or may not be able to answer tonight, but to ponder and maybe have answers for your next meeting. Um, the first thing I do want to point out, though, is you guys talk, talked earlier about being a unified school district, and I do think that's important, but it's also important to make sure that we don't have slips of the tongue, like referring to this group as the Rochester School District or School Board. So if we just want to kind of make a, make a point of trying to make sure that we don't do that in the future would be great. Um, the sliver of land that was referred to, what is that plot size? Does anyone know? I think the people who know have already left, I'm afraid. Uh, but we'll certainly find out. We'll know We'll know that by next Monday. No, I okay. don't know. Oh, we won't know by next Monday. Uh, but we we'll know before we do it. Oh, yeah, we have to wait for yeah. Dubois and King to give us the exact. Yeah, you got to have a survey. Yeah. Right, um, but I mean, a, a, a sliver of land is really, you know, not detailed information. Um, if the person who you were talking about who owns the land that abuts that does not want that land um, that you guys are considering uh, giving up, and what happens then? Uh, you're shutting off, by the way, on your screen here. Oh, thank you. Yep. Well, uh, the, I assume the, the land was originally part of the oh, Rochester nice. School District, and then it was subdivided for, um, so it would just potentially return to the school. But we need to find out what the impacts are on all this before mm -hmm. we can make That's any decisions. That's why I said we got yeah, to get the information. There's going to be legal, legal, legal counsel, legal counsel. is going to be talked to yeah. as well. Yeah. So this is we we're a long way out. Because we do not do anything that's going to be detrimental towards um, the school district. Yep. So we'll find out what the ramifications of the school actually owning and maintaining that land would be. Yep, and it, and that and and that just so if you didn't hear it, that may not we may we will not probably know that by next Monday. That may be another meeting down the road before we know the specifics of that and and move on that detail. Okay. Um. So moving on to questions in regards to if the um building is sold and the work that that committee is putting in place to have the uh, building occupied. Can you explain to me how that would impact the elementary school as far as that shared entrance is concerned? Is there, um, is there an agreement as to maintaining the parking lot area for plowing? sanding, snow plow, uh, anything like that. How is the parking distributed between the ownership of the school district with the elementary school and what is owned by what would become now that organization? Has that been discussed? Is that already mapped out? So currently the general larger parking lot area, Karen, the town of Rochester already plows for us. It's just the entryway that we, just like in Stockbridge, that we have cleared separately as a school district. Um, so in terms of mapping out who gets what parking, I don't believe that was part of the subdivide. Not yet. We certainly... Yet. We said well, that would be negotiated as well. Yeah, it would be yeah. part of the negotiation after they had made the agreement that they will take it, that we'll figure out that detail. And what about construction on that building? So if they were to begin construction on that building, would that be pre-negotiated with you guys so that we knew when that was happening and how that would have an impact on our elementary school? I would. It would have to be um, because, yeah, we have to keep, make sure there's a safe space and safe access and all that. Um, so, yeah, that would all have to be part of the negotiation. You're talking about the actual work. Has that been part of the discussion work. yet, or no. has that not no. been breached? No, because we're not even near that. We have no architectural plans. There's no, there's idea, there's, there's, we're, no, oh, go ahead. Just, Karen, we're still awaiting the town to come forward and say, we are interested in purchasing the building for a dollar. 
And then we've been advised that's when we would work out all those details. Yeah. And, and probably the next step of construction would happen in a process once the money is there and the contracting company and all that, and then it would be a negotiation of, okay, how do we keep this safe? How does well, this at the time out? of sale, we would negotiate right. all those things. Okay. Because it would be the town or this purposing committee, however the town chooses to structure it, mm -hmm. that would be doing all that construction work and would be having people in, potentially. Good. Right. And so but it's the individual owned uh, shared right away. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. We would have to figure that out. Mm-hmm. There, there are some, I mean, for the right-of-ways, for the buses and such, are specified in the subdivision. I Correct. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. there are some basic um, Mostly rights are, are already in there. But the fine details, no. Okay. Um, and moving on to the heating costs of the school, unfortunately, hindsight is twenty twenty on this one and not preparing to have that expense you know, is kind of going to kick us in the backside on this one. I am concerned about the comment that was made earlier by a school board member that said we we're potentially going to get more damage this year. Um, what were the impacts on our insurance policy? Uh, I think one of you briefly asked if the policy rate went up, but that answer, that question wasn't really answered. It was kind of uh, breezed over. So did that have an impact in our policy? And did we have a deductible that we had to cover for that damage for last year? Um, and potentially, may we have a deductible if we received more damage this year, as is a concern by the school board? We have a $2,500 property damage deductible on our insurance policy, and the claim is not closed, so it's not taken into account in our rates at this point. It's still an open claim. Oh, okay. So there is going to be some small expense because of that damage. It yeah, will have an impact on our future loss ratios, yes. Which goes into the rating factor. Okay. All right. Um, just briefly touching just on, on what Justine had mentioned about the possibility of, you know, bringing people into those spaces while the building is still owned by the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's really a feasible option, but if, if it were to be considered, obviously there would have to be consideration given to the condition of the building and who would be paying for any kind of um, cosmetic or structural improvements that would be needed for those businesses, uh, organizations to come in. So it doesn't sound like this is going to be something that's gonna be pursued. Am I right in my understanding of how that conversation went earlier this evening? I, I think Jamie made a very clear point when he said that building is in no condition to be used on a regular basis um, for the winter. Um, that said, um, we have made special um, dispensations for individual groups to use it over a short period of term time. The White River Valley Players, the Suzuki Institute um, have used parts of that building and have paid for that. Yes. And what was that? And, and am I right that that was somewhere in the vicinity of about $1,400, Ethan, between the two organizations? Did that cover all of the expenses it took to open those buildings for them? Um, I'm not sure. You had mentioned something about that you thought organizations need to take on their own maintenance and right. cleaning. We ta yeah. talked about in August, I was, it's my recommendation moving forward that if groups pursue using that space they would have to bring in their own custodial crew ahead of time because i don't have the staffing mm -hmm. to be able to do that anymore karen so that would be added into any contract so fourteen hundred dollars that we received from the players in suzuki cover the expenses it took for us to open that building for them last year it, it's not like we cranked up the heat i mean so essentially what i would say is is that it's hard to know if it covered every dollar, Karen. I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. on the record, say yes or no. What I would tell you is that we charged a fee based on the outlines of our fee structure, and we we heated the building for an extra couple of days. I think the players used it over weekends, mm -hmm. 
And moving forward, we recognize we didn't have the staffing to do custodial work. And so what we would do is probably have folks contract with the cleaner that we're currently contracting with to cover custodial Great work idea. here at the elementary school mm -hmm. in the evenings, because I'm short a custodian here as well. Okay. Um, and then it, what realistically do we look like we're going to be seeing a vote from Rochester in November, or are we stretching this back out to? I believe yeah, it was, a, it was approved, meeting day. approved to town meeting day. So March, <laughs> right? Is there a town meeting? I forget. Yeah. So it's approved for, for March. And, you know, as a as a community member, I do feel it's important to continue to educate our kids in our, in our community as, as much as we possibly can. But I do want to also point out that, you know, the community or the fair amount of people that I've talked to, you know, we are feeling cash strapped on our tax bill these days. So some of that is the school district and the rest is, you know, from just what our towns cost in order to in order to conduct business but um just kind of want to put it out there that it's already getting pretty expensive to live in the towns of Stockbridge and rochester so very thank good you for answering my questions and hopefully we can get this resolved maybe by next year good we all hope so in a positive direction Thank you for your time, Karen, and for your questions. Good. Uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, seconded. All in favor, signify by thumbs up. Aye. Thumbs Aye. up. Have a good night. Thank you. See you all tomorrow.